and welcome to my channel last but not least Pisces rising for the rest of July and it might actually um, dip into the start of August as well um, now I've already got the um, other video done um, that's on my community tab it's not a card reading it's the one showing the charts the um, tropical charts and the true sidereal charts that you can follow along with whichever one you want to go with um, and I talk about not just the new and full moon phases but any retrograde activity and any eclipse activity and there's a little bit of all that coming up so I talk about that in in the um, video and that you'll find on my community tab it's the first um, post so you just click on the video picture and, and you'll open up the video that way um, yeah and other than that I've got the pinned comment which will help give a little bit of information there to help you know <laughs> guide you through through this like the astrology as well to to um, follow through the month um, that way as well to get the best out of your reading um, and other than that some helpful links you'll find in the description box um, I think that's about it so I think I'll jump in and see what cards came through for us because I happen to be Pisces rising too I happen to have Pisces rising so yeah well let's just jump in and see what came through series oh well, that's a nice one to start with nurturance and like the mother energy whether that's to self and others whoa Vesta home and half there's two asteroids starting out off the off the bat lots of healing energy wow Eris oh wow that's three asteroids now Eris is known as the street fighter the activist she's she can be a bit fiery a um, little bit of aggressive um, stands up speaks up and speaks out um, yeah so for herself and others waning gibbers okay well that's a three-day window that's a three-day window so we're talking full moon is over here on the 21st um it's in sidereal sagittarius um yeah so from the 21st till the 24th that'd be so if it's the 20th where you are then it'll be 20th to 23rd so let's just go from 20th to 24th <laughs> that it's a three-day window so for some reason it's the the crescent of um directly after the full moon so it's still full moon energy so it's literally from full moon the first few days after the full moon make a note of what's going on you may have to um jump in with the energies um at that point of time might be best to what hide wow they're all asteroids there's no houses no signs just asteroids far out okay um hygia as the name suggests um it's not just about physical hygiene though it can be emotional spiritual um like what you eat like and also what you um feed your mind body and soul like social media like binging on things uh, is it in your best interests standing up we'll, we'll see what else has come through sagittarius which is the full moon um, sign it's right at the end degrees of Sagittarius so it may move into Capricorn a little bit as well because um, that can happen sometimes where it straddles two signs um, but if you're doing whole sign houses you'll never come across that um, but tropical will be saying it'll be in Capricorn um, 
This energy imbues power, superior confidence and enthusiasm with faith, good fortune and authority. <clears throat> the fourth house, your home and the roots of your being. Now I should actually stop this section and say Sag is in the 10th and Gemini is in the 4th. So the Capricorn house is covered by Sag and the Cancerian house is, is uh, the, the Gemini house is covered by Cancer. See, so you've got Sagittarius, Gemini and then because the Gemini sign with the Cancerian house and then the 10th house what I'm saying is there's opposites. They're opposites. Gemini is the opposite of Sagittarius, the opposing sign. And um, can the Cancer and, and Capricorn signs are opposites as well. Freedom loving is what Sagittarius is. Easygoing, freedom loving. Wanting to be free. That's more... Uranus though because um, there's higher learning long distance travel freedom expansion philosophy organized religion um, what else let's keep going is it Chiron some, some, he, some form of healing and nurturance Why is Aries there? Aries. The energy around you is dynamic and spontaneous. Crusading impulsive action is likely. Now this is in your Taurus house. Aries, because we can be impulsive with our spending. Huh. We haven't got the eighth house yet, but we, that is the second house. Standing up, speaking up, cleaning up and clearing up any, any negativity. Because this is the full moon energy, so it's about making tweaks and changes. Ah, I mentioned Uranus, and that's smack in the middle. Um, Uranus is the ruling planet of the Aquarius sign. wanting to break free as i said when i was picking up on the sagittarius your potential for sudden change enlightenment and awakening sudden change in your money house wow what else six house now we've got the virgo house craft well that's in leo another fire sign so you've got Sag Aries and Leo because well Leo is the sign of your sixth house it's the Virgo themes covered by the sign of Leo which is children creativity romance fun ascendant rising sign Pisces rising outlook. Libra the idealist. Ah, uh, <laughs> I was just, I don't know if you heard me say before that we didn't have the eighth house or Scorpio out, but now we do. This is the eighth house in Libra. Shared resources, shared income. Resources doesn't necessarily mean um, money, but yeah, shared resources. Mm. 
Also some sort of shared resource you have with others that needs a bit of cleaning up in some way or speaking up for yourself in some square challenge. <clears throat> Squares can be difficult at times. <coughs> My throat's going straight up. <coughs> as soon as the square came out, bam. <coughs> Eris is asking us to speak up, to clear away any negativity, any, um, I want to say unclear, any cloudiness, I suppose, any, um, Any difficulties? Anything that's a bit not working for us kind of thing. Something's definitely challenging and we need to take up the challenge. And I'm lately I've noticed if the Hygieia card comes out, it's very similar looking to this smoky quartz. Um, I don't know if you can see it that high up or not, but it's almost exactly like it. So I'm going to put it there because smoky quartz is all about cleaning and clearing away um, what's no longer serving us, I guess, putting it that way. What's what's holding us back, what's, you know, in our way. Aries the Radical. Oh, here we've got Aries twice now. So now we've got a bit more reiteration of the um, second house of, of values. Self-worth it could be too. It could be a self-worth thing. Sag in the 10th. Your work life. Something needs to have a bit of a change in some way. Um, ah, we got 10th house again in Sag reputation huh how the world sees you oh The words clean up your act come to mind. Not really. I don't know if I wanted to say that, but yeah. Because this is for me too, because I've got Pisces rising. But um, something needs to be cleared up in some way so that it works in a better way for you. Nurturance and, you know, mothering and, and um, home and hearth. What feels like home to you? I think it's more of a standing up for yourself in that sense and clearing that up in that way, speaking up for yourself instead of just putting up with stuff that isn't working. Let's see, these might have reversals, we'll see if this can clean, clean it up a bit. Um, well, Saturn's in, in retrograde right now anyway. This is saying structure is something a bit topsy-turvy. I'm kind of actually feeling that a little bit in one area of... Um, ...things, but not really in the 10th house. Um, but this is saying the 10th house... Could be about taking another look because that's what the retrogrades are about. I explained that in the um, video anyway on the community tab. Um, 
about working with the retrograde energies at the moment. But this is in retrograde. doesn't mean that you won't have structure. It just means that you've got a chance to reevaluate things, maybe look, look at things better, stand up for yourself, speak up for yourself if you need to. What else have we got here? Whoa, Uranus is up, right? Twice, change. So that's good because it's upright. So change wants to happen. Whoa, dignified strength, that's in reverse. So there's been some sort of um, difficulty. Something's been a bit difficult and hard to... ...manage? No, I've been... Um, I haven't been having the easiest time myself lately. This better be about you guys as well as me. Um, but anyway, uh, seventh house relationship. Okay, Libra, Libra themes. And that's in Virgo, seventh house. Relationship. Ah, maybe there's been some sort of issue because relationships are of all kinds, not just romantic or um, business or friendships. It can be family as well because these are two sort of family-oriented um, home, hearth, mothering, nurturing energies. Um, and perhaps that's what's needing to come in more. Maybe there's been some sort of uh, difficult energies in the home that have made things tough for your work life. Hmm. Shared resources in the Leo house. No, it's Leo sign in the in the Virgo house. There's your money and self worth. Making a change. Health, financial health. Because that's your second house C and Virgo house um, with Leo. Healing something, healing, healing. Because something needs to be cleaned up. It might be, ha ha, it might be spending habits. Wow. But then how does Eris, unless it's more about, like, more internal, like um, a retrograde would be, where you're having to look at yourself and stand up to yourself and perhaps some bad habits like overspending or whatever. Finding that nurturance without the overspending, perhaps. Change needs to happen. You haven't been... Because this is... This is in reverse. So you haven't been really feeling yourself, maybe. I know it's been a bit weird lately with the energies. Um, Lilith was conjunct something or other, and there's been some... Um,
solar flares that have been happening, M class and X class. So they've been sort of affecting us here on Earth. They don't just affect our electronics. They can affect us emotionally as well. Um, relationship, relationship in the reverse though. What is this other card? Let's see if that could... Well, South Node... Ah. <laughs> okay. This is in reverse, so it's one of two things. Either it's reminding, or it could be both actually, it could be reminding you to head toward your north node and or you're getting a little too lost in this south node energy. Remembering the dark, dark past, I want to say the deep past. Chiron's here, Chiron talks about, generally talks about any wounds we've had normally it's, it focuses on right early years, you know, childhood years. Hmm. I <laughs> standing up for yourself. It is a challenge to do so. You haven't felt strong. Huh. Really hope this isn't just about me because I know that there's some things here that I'm straight up starting to connect with now. Because um, I didn't have the best childhood, let me say, um, which did not have me feeling dignified. And it's been, see, this is the thing with, with uh, did, Mercury didn't come out, right? But we're in his shadow now, pre-shadow which means we're feeling his energies already. What can happen there is that we can be reminded of past things. But the idea behind it isn't to remind us to punish us or to tell us we have to go back to the person or whatever. So that's why why some people get confused if, if an ex turns up or something and they think, oh, I have to go back with them. No, Mercury is showing us how far we've come I talk about that in the um, video on the community tab anyway. But this might be what's going on is, is Mercury's bringing this to the forefront and saying this is the thing that's holding you back because that's why it was sort of, yeah, that's why I wasn't really picking up completely what was going on. It seemed to be a, a sort of kerfuffle of different bits and pieces. But I'm getting it now. This relationship in reverse is about any past familial relationships that weren't so great healing from them clearing that energy away standing up for ourselves so whether it was the really deep past as child childhood or you know, it could be either family bloodline or anyone who at some point in time did sort of feel like family and hurt us in some way. Um, we're being asked to do that work. Well, uh -huh. sometimes it's easy to ignore or it seems the easier thing to ignore and pretend it's you know, you stick our head in, our, in the sand and go, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Well, yeah. For me, I know what this means that, um, yeah, it's about clearing that away so that it no longer is stuck to me and I no longer feel undignified. And I can turn this one around. Hopefully someone out there is relating to this too because I really don't want it to be just about me because I'm going to be putting this on my channel. I, um, but yeah, so I'm just seeing how it relates to me. Um, 
but yeah jumping in with the smoky quartz clearing away which with the full moon this is a sort of perfect thing to um, work through you know writing down what we feel hurt by who we feel hurt by whatever even to the point because I've done this sort of thing before as well even to the point where we don't hold ourselves back in terms of even writing swearing whatever whatever just you know like uh, what do they call it I think they might call it auto writing or something just writing whatever comes to your mind just straight up writing it out and then about whatever past hurts happened and then quietly reading it out to yourself and that that's a massive cathartic thing to actually then read your own words out to yourself about whatever you went through and then burn the paper you know rip it up or whatever you feel comfortable doing but I burn it you know completely get rid of it let it go into the ethers and I feel like I need to do that for this particular issue um, now too. Um, but yeah, and I think that's what's the idea of Hygieia in terms of emotional health. I mean, if, if you feel the need to um, see a, a um, professional therapist, then yeah, jump into that too. But this is an idea of the writing down thing. That's what I do sometimes. Because therapy has its place as well. But yes, yeah, speaking up for yourself, even if it's on paper, and then writing, uh, reading it out, even quietly on your own somewhere, where you feel safe and free to do that. And then, yeah, rip it up or burn it or whatever you, you can to get rid of it. Because that is being the activist for yourself. And um, it can be very cathartic to do something like that too because then you're bringing in, you've got both of these nurturing asteroids, both of them. You know, being your own mother, for me it was mother wounds. Um, South Node, you know, mother anyway. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I think I've told a little TMI, but anyway, yeah, um, bringing in the nurturing, I think that's going to happen once you jump into, you know, being your own activist, standing up for yourself, making that change, because this guy was upright, see, then you're going to bring that dignity back, feel that dignity, and no longer be stuck in your south node. Because while we're stuck in the south node, it doesn't help the relationships we have now going on, you know. If there's something from the past, even if it's not that far back in the past, if it's something from the past that we're still clinging on to, it's not going to be a healthy thing for us and it's going to hold us back with future relationships and, and wishes and hopes and dreams that we want to bring in. So while I'm giving this advice I'm also giving this advice to myself because as soon as I get off here I'm going to be working to doing this myself I think so I think this is going to be really important and cathartic I want to say because there's your health house the, the um, Virgo house we didn't get the seventh house but we did get the Libra um, that happens to be in the 8th. Shared resources though. Is there anything about that? Or just the intensity of the Scorpio house, perhaps, in terms of relationships. Yeah, I think that, ha, ah, yes. I, th I think that that, it's holding things back so that you your own self worth is 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 not letting you move forward to um, enjoy better financial abundance. 
Because see, remember the dignified was um, strength was in reverse. So I think this work is what Saturn's wanting you to do. Saturn retrograde. Take that time to do that. Look at things that have upset you. Look at things that aren't working. What can you clear up? What can you look into? What can you maybe write about? Or, or, or if that's the way that will work for you to clear away the challenging energies so that they're no longer challenging and then you're op opening the way for nurturance and things to grow and move forward. Well, I didn't expect a reading like this. It was quite... Um, it was it seemed initially all over the place but yeah this is 20th to 24th okay so that if we haven't already worked with the full moon by then that this is a reminder to do that while it's still because obviously that time frame is closer to the the um, energy of the full moon than say a week later or or right near the end um, near the next new moon so yeah, I think that this is sort of reiterating this has to be done. So if if this if you relate to this in some way, if there's some sort of thing that you've been avoiding, <laughs> no shade I've been avoiding too. That's why it's come up. That's why it was sort of like, oh damn, I need to do this. Um Yeah. If there's something that you sort of using Saturn retrograde and think about, okay, is there anything holding me back? Is there anything I've avoided dealing with? Is there anything that perhaps has more of an influence in a negative way? Remember, that's, you know, because self-worth, right? The thing about second house, I say money and self-worth, it's the financial house the values, the um, luxuries, um, even gourmet food or really healthy meals, that sort of thing, um, the sensual side of things, you know, because um, Venus ruled, the, Venus rules Libra and um, Taurus, this is a Taurus house covered by the sign of Aries so there's the impulsivity we have there that's why I was picking up on the idea of overspending because of the impulsivity sometimes we might overspend to avoid dealing with the south node issues sort of thing perhaps I know I have been guilty of that from time to time um, what they call retail therapy <laughs> It's not so therapeutic for you, bank balance. But anyway, um, yeah, because the second house is Taurus themes, which, as I narrow it down to, it's about values. Like you could value your friendships, you could re value your relationships. The value also extends to self worth, valuing yourself getting your strength back and your dignity back damn this is kind of heavy um but change needs to happen and and i think that what it's saying here is you have the opportunity to make that change um tenth house reputation Because 10th house is in Sag, and Sag doesn't sort of cower and hold back. And if you have been holding back, that's probably because of this. I know I have the tendency to hold back. You know. What I mean by hold back is sort of not allow ourselves to 
jump on opportunities that would actually otherwise be good for us. You know, sort of being a little too afraid to move ahead because of all the Piscean energy. Well, this isn't Piscean, this is Taurus house with Aries. But, you know, Pisces rising. Um, ascendant. But, yeah, I think that whatever this thing that if you can pinpoint something that might be the the thing the crux holding you back blocking you in some way or something like that i think that once this is dealt with then the nurturing will come in the healing will take place you'll be you know looking after your own self-worth in a healthy way which will bring about change which Saturn wants you to do methodically, which will help with your reputation and help with your finances. And get you out of this stuck energy. And help with relationships as well. Wow, that's big. Okay, what are the what's the numerology? Moderation. Well, here you go, Saturn retrograde, yes. Green heart chakra colour. And then the red is the base chakra, which is about grounding, stability, security, material security. Everything in moderation. Take, take your time. Do what you can. Um, one, emotional vitality and personal power. Four, the number of the builder. And one and four is five, which is um, freedom and change. Eh, healing. Wow. Blue throat chakra. Communication. Speaking up for yourself. Doing the work. Be the be a voice for yourself. Wow. This is kind of pretty heavy, huh? <laughs> Um, and look, this is temporary opportunity, focus, detail, and dignity. And this is doubled up. So it, usually with the, the master numbers, it makes me think that more than one person will um, benefit from whatever work you do. Because often work on ourselves can have the effect of others changing their attitude towards us or uh, about us or, or with us you know which can help with relationships and turn that around in our favor and theirs don't let the past hold you back two sixes come to a three which is action activity youth newness and communication Um, whoa, leadership. Okay, so again, we've got um, the base chakra color and we've got another heart chakra color. Eight is money and stability. One, again, emotional vitality, personal power. Nine is big beginnings, big endings and spirituality. Love. Again, with the throat chakra speaking your truth. Um, creativity, communication. I would also look up in the angel numbers. Unlike the um, hype and what media wants us to believe, three sixes is not a terrible number, it's, you know. I don't want to sort of say what is said usually, but look up that number, triple six, 
as the angel numbers and see what extra messages um, from the angels, you know, um, will help to add to this reading. Okay, so now we've got some abundance messages for July. So what does it say here? Sorry, I was really hoping for this to be a sort of upbeat, really <laughs> good, but no. Um, you can dance with the illusions of time and space, choosing your steps based upon things and events as they now are, or you can dance with your dreams, choosing your steps based upon things and events as they will be. And I bet um, you can guess which steps will perpetuate today's illusions and which ones will change everything, shall we? The universe. We're going to dance with the universe. And feel dignified and gain our strength. I'm, I'm jumping into working with some um, smoky quartz. I'm going to grab each bit of smoky quartz I have. I don't have that many, but I've got a couple of smaller bits too. I'm going to just grab them all and go, right, I'm doing this. That's it. <laughs> Okay, did I show you? I did, I think I did. Um, you wondering how would be as silly as me wondering why. I don't and neither should you. I mean, let's not be that crazy, the universe. Well, I don't know, is it in there? Ever wonder why some of those who achieve incredible success, amass fortunes and enjoy sizzling relationships seem so unlikely? It's because intelligence, looks, even creativity come in a distant second place to believing. Achievers achieve because they believe they could and follow it up with consistent baby steps. Remember Saturn's retrograde, so slow and methodical. Take the lead in your own life. Slow and... Um, baby steps and so the heavens and earth were moved i believe in you the universe i'm going to put this guy here right that will do oh they're a bit in the way this is a beautiful picture An abundant life is an abundant life, not abundance all by itself. In case anyone asks, you know. See yourself in the throes of living and see me at your side, the universe. I'm gonna, you know what, this guy, I'm going to put him right here, I think. In between healing and leadership, you're going to get dignity. You're going to feel dignified. I'm going to put him there instead. Now, what do the guardian angels want you to know or want us to know? Forgiveness. Wow. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Thank you, spirit. <laughs> I really hope someone else is, <laughs> is relating to this because I don't want it to just be my reading and then nobody relates. That suck. Um Holding on to a past hurt is preventing you from moving forward and achieving your heart's desires. Oh, my God. Um, let it go. Forgiveness does not mean that you condone another's actions. It simply means that you are no longer willing to be a perpetual victim to a particular person or event. Blame is a waste of your precious energy. Bless and surrender the past, for in doing so, you will reclaim the joy of life. Yeah. Yeah. In the moderation with Saturn, I mean, if that if that little um, idea that I said earlier is something you think you could give a try to for with whatever, then go for it. I'm certainly going to do it for myself because once you've done it, you're not sitting in the energy still. You know, sitting in the South Node, you've you've dealt with it. You know, I've done it with other things before, and it's worked. And I you know, haven't been holding on to things as, as badly as I used to in that sense when I've worked with it. Rainbow, you are a jewel, even though you may not see it. Even in the darkest times, you shine eternally bright. 
you are surrounded by an aura of love and a pot of gold waits beyond the horizon. All will clear soon. Clear, see? Like I said, it was a bit cloudy. Um, trust and continue to follow your dreams. You are eternally blessed. I might put that on here. What else have we got here? Opportunity. Wondrous possibilities and opportunities await you. Stop dwelling on past mistakes. Yeah. Um, surrender the past lovingly. There is nothing to regret. All is always in perfect and divine order. Everything you've ever experienced has helped you in some way. The past is behind you. The path ahead is clear. Move forward joyfully and fulfill your heart's desire. Yeah, take the lead in your own life. Yeah, I, th I think it's the darn retrograde energies are just sort of hitting me pretty hard, I think, and bringing back this some of this crap I haven't really dealt with. <laughs> Sorry if it's sort of been a little bit um, overtaking your reading. Hopefully someone out there is relating to this besides me. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what's this say? Patience. And we've got the Saturn energy again. Have patience. Patience is required at the moment. You may feel that things are not moving as fast as you would like. Yeah, that's because we've got stuff holding us back that we haven't cleared. Um, yet there is a lot going on energetically. The current situation causing concern is evolving positively. Let go and have patience. You will eventually realize that this whole event was in fact a blessing. Okay. <laughs> All is perfect as it is. Trust. You are eternally eternally loved and guided. I'm going to swap these out because I think that the healing one needs to go there. I want to read this one again, though. See, um, Move forward joyfully and fulfill your heart's desire. Past is behind you. The path ahead is clear. See? Clear away that past energy so that you can bring in the nurturing helpful energies and show the universe how you feel about yourself and what you want you know standing up speaking up for yourself telling the universe what you want um and here it is you are surrounded by an aura of love and a pot of gold waits beyond the horizon all will clear soon uh, trust and continue to follow your dreams you're eternally blessed Okay, well, I'm um, going to leave it there, I think. And um, change is on the way. Change wants to happen, and it's going to be change for the good. We just have to be open to doing our part of the work in it to bring it forward faster. If we want it forward, fa if we want our things coming in faster, then clear the way for it to happen as fast as we, you know clear the way so it's you know that yeah making that space for the good to come in and heal heal what has seemed to keep us stuck and stagnant and not feeling dignified and not feeling you know strong in it in the situation but yeah i think a lot of bits and pieces are going to heal once that's done aha uh -huh really was not hoping for my own stuff to filter into the reading but there we go <laughs> well you know um it happens i have said many times before that i have pisces rising um but yeah so hopefully someone else relates to this besides me but yeah anyway i hope that this has helped and i wish you guys all the best of luck with this as i do myself because I'm going to jump into these energies and do my best to work with them for my highest good, which is what I hope would be for you guys too if if you relate to something that um, you haven't let go of, whether it's right at childhood or in the recent past. Time to get that um, weight off you, you know, that emotional um what's it called um what are the i guess they're called weights anyway aren't they those things that you put on the bars 
in the gym, you know, you, the, the, that you put more weights on or whatever. I think you know what I'm trying to say. I'm just sort of getting all sort of muddled, I guess. But yeah, if there's something that that um, you can relate to that, hey, that's probably what's been holding me back all this time, then see if that writing exercise, like I said, might um, be helpful for you to, to have a little bit of space quietly by yourself where you feel safe, write down things, even if you swear on paper, whatever, you know, get it out and then rip it up or burn it or whatever after you've read it out to yourself because that's a big, really huge thing to read it out to yourself because it's like, whoa. But it's so cathartic. And I think I'm going to do that sort of, yeah, I think I'm going to do that to myself, um, for myself as well. So, yeah, um, I think I've said all I can say about this. Wasn't expecting a reading like this. But, you know, once we clear this, we're, you know, opening up the way for a lot better to come in. Pot of gold awaits beyond the horizon. It's waiting for us. It's promised to us. We, it's our pot of gold. We just have to do that bit of work to get it. It's not whether or not we'll get it. We will get it. We just have to do the work so we open the way and then we've got our pot of gold. Bam. Nurturance. Standing up for ourselves. Speaking up for ourselves. Clearing the debris. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully it's helped someone besides just me. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> um, I wish you all the best of luck with it, like I said, as I wish for myself as well. And um, until next time, bye for now.